watching you. You're still saying the same thing, only that you are just using the method to say, Thou fool, you are angry at something. Before you can call your husband a fool, your wife a fool, foolish child, before you can call that child a fool, before you can call our workers, our leaders, before you can call anyone that does something a fool and you think you are bold and you think you are courageous and you are able to come to them because you have learned language, you have read the world's literature and you know how to say it in the world's teaching that you might say it indirectly but you say it pointedly, pungently the fellow knows you are talking to him you are talking to a doubtful he says you will be in danger of hell fire you see all that ties you down all those actions now if it's not just thou fool but you have stolen if it's not just thou fool you've committed fornication if it's not just thou fool you've committed adultery if it is not thou just thou fool you have taken somebody's life you have committed murder if it is not just thou fool you have the love of money that is the root of all evil all those things are there the new year new year hold on you must be released from the chains and the shackles of the past life how do you get that done number one repentance number two restitution number three reconciliation look at verse 23 therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remembers that thy brother thy wife thy husband thy children thy parents thy leader your leaders in the church have ought against thee Leave there thy gift before the altar. That's restitution now. And go thy way and force be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. Repentance, restitution, reconciliation. That's what the Lord taught. It is that that then releases you from the old guilt and the old condemnation and now you're free as free as the birds flying in the air and you will get somewhere i'm talking to somebody i say you'll get somewhere but there must be repentance and repentance means you so turn away from those old tricks and from those old insults and from those old abuses and from those old terrible evil character habitual evil character you turn away from them and then you make right the past so that now you're free to move on in the new life first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 21 first peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 21. For ye even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That ye should follow his steps. He wants us to follow, we're going to follow. I said we're going to follow. You follow his steps. That means you'll ask yourself, when we come to worship the Lord, and we need to worship in spirit and in truth, how will Christ want me to worship? How will Christ worship the Heavenly Father? He'll worship Him without any distraction. And if I'm going to follow His footsteps, I want to do the same thing. And I want to help other people to do the same thing and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Look at verse 22. Who did not sin, they were, were not sin, neither was guile, lying, deception, deceit found in his mouth. And so lies and deceit, deception, guile will not be found in our mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again no retaliation in the life of christ and no retaliation in our lives when he suffered he threatened not 
but he committed himself to him that judges righteously who is himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin we being dead to sin sin will not excite us this year will not influence us this year will not make us get up and you know want to go and touch the untouchable this year in jesus name being dead to sin should live unto righteousness live unto righteousness and we're told here by stripes tell me the rest we are healed we're looking at revelation chapter 14. revelation chapter 14 we're reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. These are they which were not defiled with women. And then it goes on to tell us that they follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth not defiled with women. What does that mean? You know what it means? Women in pictures. They are not there, but the pictures are there. You don't defile yourself with them. Women on the internet. They are not there physically with you, but they could defile you. Those women on the internet. You know where they sometimes they just pop up. They are doing a normal thing. You're browsing a normal thing, and then they just pop up. Well, you're not guilty because you are not looking for that. But now, when you then follow through, and it goes, says, punch this, you punch that, you go that, you go that, you go there, now you are defiled. You did dream. You imagine bad things. But the people who are following the master, the heavenly master, they are not defiled with women and they're not defiled with men either and then if it's not on the internet it's on the street in the corners of the street you're not saying i want to pass through that way maybe they'll be there why do you want to pass this why don't you go this other way your heart is looking for defilement but this year you make up your mind if they are there, I'm off, I'm this way. And now, not only on the street, in your house, your maid in your house, the helpers in your house, wife is going to market, wife is going to work, and you're just there. Ah, be careful. If your hand causes you to offend, cut it off. Your eyes cause you to offend, pluck it out. If you know that that lady that is helping in the house will not allow you to get to heaven, then dismiss her. And uh, maybe you take over the cooking and the home housekeeping yourself. It is that serious if you're going to get to heaven that you'll not be defiled by anyone. A man, a woman, a money, the people who are defiled with money, look at that verse, I'm going to go to First Timothy, but look at this. It says, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. First Timothy chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 6. First Timothy chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Here is what it says in verse 6. It says, but she, the woman, but she is so-called church goer, but she is so-called believer, but leading up, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Don't you be led astray by, you know, backsliding women. The way they dress, the way they comport themselves, and the things they show that they ought to cover up. That will tempt the men and derail the men. You don't want to put your mind, your eyes on that. Because there is a heavenly master and you are following that master. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, 
I'm reading here from verse 6. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich, they want to get rich quick. They want cheap prosperity. They want a lot of money in their bank accounts without sweat on their faces. It says, they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men in destruction and perdition. The end of it is perdition. The end of it is destruction. You see all the uh, EFCC things uh, going, uh, going on now? And the people that had those things before, they even throwing it away. If they could hide themselves somewhere, that those accounts will not be associated with them, they would have done that. This scene in the world here, even in the world here, is something you want to run away from. The covetousness, the perdition, the destruction. It says it drowns men in destruction and perdition for the love of money. No love for the master. Money has taken their hand. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. I will not err from the faith. You know, money can derail you. Take your mind away from Bible study. Take your mind away from the doctrines of the Bible. Take your mind away from the heavenly journey, the heavenward journey. Money. Money is so terrible. It's supposed to be a servant. It becomes a master that rules over you and pierces themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Your will. I said your will, repentance, restitution, reconciliation. Point number three, renewing the spirit to fulfill the heavenly mandate. Renewing the spirit to fulfill the heavenly mandate. In Psalm 51, Psalm 51. Reading from verse 10, Psalm 51, we're reading from verse 10. Here in verse 10, it emphasizes once again the renewal of the Spirit. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away. From thy presence, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and appoint me with thy free spirit. Then, after that restoration, then, after that renewal, then, after that revival, it says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee renewed spirit that helps you to now focus on the heavenly mandate there's the heavenly mandate the lord has given to everyone going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature there is the heavenly mandate that god has given to you in particular and it says this is why you were born this is why you were born again and this is why you are in the kingdom for such a time like this no other person can do that kingdom assignment on your behalf you are the one appointed and assigned anointed and uh, edified and put in place of dead to do that is the heavenly mandate for you like paul the apostle for this purpose have i called him to take my name to the gentiles and to the kings and to the children of israel it was a heavenly mandate for him and he did it and you will do your own 
Somebody there said you will do your own. He did not fail, you will not fail. He did not falter, you will not falter. And he did not give it up, you will not give it up in Jesus' name. On the other hand, if there is a mandate, hellish mandate, that Satan has given you, because Satan wants to take the servants of Christ and make those servants his own servants. Satan wants to take the people, Simon, Simon, or Simeon, Simeon, whichever way you bear, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you like wheat, but I'm praying for you. And Simon said, and Simeon said, don't pray for me, Master, I'm all right. No, you are not all right. Satan wants to have you, and he wants to give you a hellish mandate. But you are the one to throw it away, and throw that cloak away, and say, that's hellish. That's horrible. I'm not going to go that way. And then you pick up the heavenly mandate, and you say, I am going to heaven. Somebody there, I am going to heaven. What are you? Somebody there, I am going to heaven. Put down your hand. You know, you know what? On the day, if the rapture delays, if the rapture doesn't take place now, on the day you are panting for your latest breath, and you are gasping, and we're looking at you, the fellow who is trying to give you a hellish mandate now, who is going to, who is trying to withdraw you from the heavenly mandate, that fellow, even if that fellow is there, he will not be able to help you. You're trying to breathe, you cannot breathe. You're trying to sustain life here, you cannot. The people that distract your attention and the people that want to hold you back from following the heavenward journey on that final day, they'll not be able to help. And they'll just abandon you like that. And when you eventually die, and they're going to bury you, if anybody wants to push them, they say, why are you pushing me? Do you want me to get into the pit with him? They will not go with you. You will go there alone by yourself. And you will not say, I would have done this. I would have done that. But the sympathizers did not allow me to do that. I would have been restored. I would have given my life to Jesus Christ completely and totally. I would have followed the heavenly mandate. But the people around me, they were telling me, don't go too far. Don't go too far. But this day, you want to break up the shackles and any chain that binds you to anybody. You want to say, I came into this world when I was born. Naturally, into this world, did I know you? Were you there? And when I was born, born again and I came into the kingdom while you there when I came to the altar and I laid my life on the altar and I said Lord I will follow you while you there when I made entire consecration I said sanctify me Lord purify me Lord purge me Lord I will serve you for the rest of my life while you there and when he gave the Holy Ghost and I said if you give me the power of the Holy Ghost I will go everywhere I will touch everything I will transform the life of many people were you there and when he brought you to deeper life I said that is where to stay I want to deepen your life I want to deepen your conviction and I want to get your feet and set your feet on the way that goes to heaven were they there and when he called you to be a pastor when he called you to be a preacher when he called you to be a, a minister when he called you to be a missionary I said yes Lord I surrender I surrender all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give and then you say said, I surrender my soul, my spirit, my future, my life, my possession, everything I have were dead there and now they want to come in and they want to rubbish everything you have laid upon the altar. But Abraham, he sacrificed to the Lord and he gave it to the Lord and the birds of prey, they came, he was awake and he drove them away. You'll drive them away from your life. The people that will hinder your commitment, hinder your consecration, Hinder your devotion unto the Lord. Hinder your entire total consecration. Be sold to the Lord. And going on on this heavenly journey, you're going to jettison them and throw them aside and say, if you want to follow, follow. But this year, I am running. This year, I am running. 
Somebody there this year, I am running. And the Lord will assist you with his power in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. Where are those people? I said, where are those people? The Lord bless you this year. You shall renew. Renew what time has come. It says, if you will renew your strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as eagles. All the chains are broken, mount up with wings as eagles. All the shackles are broken, mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall run, they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and they shall not faint. There's no fainting soldier this year. There's no fainting saint this year. Courageous, consecrated and committed and continuing and focusing your mind on that heavenly mansion and the heavenly master and the heavenly mandate we're going to reach there i've made up my mind i've made up my mind whatever others do i'll be there am i talking to somebody there are you like that this year why don't you rise up and tell the lord I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, because this is the year, the year of achievement, the year of power, the year of purpose, the year of prayer. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us try these soldiers of the Lord say, Amen. This year is going to be different. The power of the Lord will sustain you. The vision of the Most High will be in front of you. You will succeed. In your spiritual life, you will succeed. Family life, you will succeed. Academic life, you will succeed. Professional life, you will succeed. And every promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. God will say yes to you. The Savior will say yes to you. Holy Ghost will say yes to you. Angels will say yes to you. And we in our church here, we will not discourage you. We will lift up your hand, myself and all the ministers. We will say yes to you. Praise of God, son. Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you for this new year. It's going to be a year of holiness, a year of health, a year of prosperity, and a year of happiness. Oh Lord, I pray all the negative things of the past, wipe them away in Jesus' name. Strengthen everyone. Saturate everyone to power. Empower everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you give us the grace this year everyone one by one to follow the heavenly master help us lord to go this way of heaven and also follow through and fulfill heavenly mandate upon our lives in jesus name lord we're asking this year we will desire we will take the heavenly manner and to bring strength we bring courage, we bring boldness, we bring victory, we bring righteousness, we bring prosperity. This world will walk in every life this year in Jesus' name. Strengthen everyone. Restore the backsliders. Renew the believers. And revive the body of Christ. We're asking Lord, as your people go, they go home with the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. When you come back, next time, you come back with testimonies. Every sickness taken away from your body. Infirmity taken away from your life. Be strong and be made whole in Jesus' name. Your wife will live. Your husband will live. Your children will live. Your parents will live premature death cancel from every life in jesus name and everything the lord has mandated for you to achieve this year to the minutest detail nothing will cause failure in jesus name 
joy and happiness will be waiting for you everywhere and remain successful remain blessed we love you god loves you and the love of god will pull you over lord fulfill your will in every life and say yes to everyone in jesus name we pray once again happy new year prosperous new year and the lord prosper your way this year in jesus name if i have opportunity of seeing you anytime you have a testimony to give me thank you and god bless you Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, thank you, God, for renewing us. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for the word that has come forth, Father. Lord, we decree this moment, Father, that anything, O oh God, that want to take us away from you, whatsoever that want to replace the heavenly mandate that you have given unto us in any form or shape, Lord, we release the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of yeah. Jesus Christ. Father, we will keep running the race. We will keep running the race. But the man, the, the man soul will not fall off our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, heaven is our goal. We and the families and the church that you have given to us, we will take the mandate and we will reach the race in the name of Jesus. We will keep pressing towards the calling. We will keep pressing towards the mark. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we should dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen tell somebody you will make the race you will run the race to perfection amen <laughs> Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Jim.